Hi everyone, buyer's agent Jay Pace here for Providence Property Group with the market update for the month that was July 2022. It is with great pride that we announce Providence Property Group has won the 2022 Local Business Award City Suburbs for Best Real Estate Business. The judges had their work cut out for them as the category's finalists represented the very best in the industry. We are earnestly grateful for the recognition that we received for our work. We want to thank all of our valued clients and our referral partners for making this award possible. We at Providence Property Group truly appreciate your business and are so very grateful for the trust that you've placed in us. We look forward to continuing to build on the work that we've done and hope that the next 16 years of business are every bit as successful as the last. Now, I'm sick of it, but we're going to talk about interest rates, okay? Now, the Reserve Bank of Australia has again lifted the official cash rate for the fourth straight month. RBA Governor Philip Lowe announced an increase of another 50 basis points, taking us from the July cash rate of 1.35% to a new cash rate of 1.85%. Now, remember, the RBA has a cash rate target of 2%, which they announced last year, and now we're at 1.85. So it's going to be very interesting to see where they go from here. They've, they've done some pretty strong and big moves over the past couple months now. So I would expect they're going to taper off a little bit, but I don't know. Let's just see what happens there. Now, the smart money is definitely not worried about interest rates. I'm not worried about interest rates. The money markets are already lowering their expectations on rate rises, and they've recently dropped their projections from 4.5%, they thought that's where the RBA cash rate would probably peak. They've already dropped it down to 3% and we've only had four months of increases. So I've heard horror stories of people fixing rates at 6.5% already and I just think, wow, those people are gonna be in for a shock later. Now, this is the rolling three month change in dwelling values for our state capitals and we can see a further decline of the Sydney and Melbourne markets and a slight softening of Adelaide, Brisbane and Perth. We listen to our clients and they're looking for above average growth and rental returns that are going to be above average as well. This has definitely resulted in many of our investments over the past, I don't know, five years or so being directed more towards Brisbane and recently Perth. Now, I keep getting asked by a lot of buyers, you know, Jay, do you think I've missed the boat on Brisbane? In 2022, Brisbane had almost 30% growth. So it was a significant amount for one year. Some suburbs actually increased over 40%, but this chart shows that Brisbane's growth, represented in green, over the past five years has exceeded its long-term average. But if we look at the 10 and 15 years, it's still below that average. So this leads us to believe that this market is still undervalued and has enough runway to continue growing. I also think there's social proof now, the market's gone up 30% and people who have been saying their whole lives, Brisbane never makes money, are gonna go, "Mm, maybe it's time that I do buy up there. In 2018, we actually uploaded a video to our YouTube channel telling our clients to buy in Brisbane. And I know those who listen to us are now very, very happy. Now, Let's look at what else is going on. We will be recording a separate analysis on Perth, but for now, here are just a few of the key reasons why WA has piqued our curiosity and is definitely piquing some of the other people in the industry that I've been talking to. Perth dwelling values have risen about 24.5% since June 2020. And in April, we hit a very significant milestone because values have exceeded the previous high from the June 2014 period. So June 2014 was the high of that market before the Eurozone crisis happened and Portugal, Ireland, Greece and Spain all came out and said we're in huge financial distress and uh, China and India thought we're going to lose our biggest consumer. So they basically stopped a lot of the orders that they were making to Perth for raw materials to create white goods, cars, you know, copper, iron ore, etc. So this is a real big milestone that it's reached now and I think it's very interesting to see where it goes from here. Now, Western Australia's share of national gross domestic product GDP is about 15.9%, but the state only represents 10% of the national population, so it's quite a large number. Western Australia's export accounts for 36.5% of the nation's total, and that's the largest of all the states and territories in Australia. WA also leads all states in terms of weekly household income at about $1,595 based upon the last... ABS data. Now that figure is 111% of the national average. So they're up there. The state's employment growth is also the fastest right now 
in the nation at about 5.5%. Uh, now that's over the past 12 months compared to the average 2.4% for the rest of Australia. It's the richest state in Australia with an operating surplus estimated at $5.6 billion. Perth has the second highest gross yields and the third lowest vacancy rate in Australia with the fourth highest state population. So simply put, Western Australian economy is the strongest of the nation. Property in Perth represents great value and rents are in high demand. So I predict that in the next 12 to, let's say, 18, 24 months, you're going to see a lot of money leave the East Coast and start going over to the West Coast. And I've been saying this now for about six months, but I think we're going to start to see that sooner rather than later. Now, let's talk about the winners and the losers. Uh, Australian dwelling values fell by 1.3% in July, marking it being the third consecutive month that CoreLogic's National Home Value Index has fallen. After national dwelling values surged 28.6% through the pandemic growth phases, values are now 2% below its April peak. Okay, so the top three growth capitals for July were Darwin, Adelaide, and Perth. Now, the slight drop in pricing, again, 2% after a 28% rise, it's not surprising to me when the media is spreading fear and confusion with headlines like these. Let me read a few of them. Pro and I'm going to do my best to car in a fair voice. Property prices fall at May and bigger than expected. Australia's housing market breaks another record. Sydney house prices fall the fastest pace in over 32 years. Like, you're seeing stuff like this, and this is notably why it's starting to freak some people out. But before we all gather the marshmallows and get comfy to watch the world burn, I invite you to jump into my time machine, and let's go back to the year 2020. We entered the first recession that Australia had seen in over three decades. We saw a world pandemic, which affected every man, woman and child on the planet, and still is. Our government committed to a stimulus package that was three times greater than their response to the GFC. Now, here are some of the hundreds of ugly headlines that we were confronted with in 2020. Harvard Economist says that Australia's, Australia has the most overvalued property prices in the world. Falling, houses, falling house prices to cut spending. Um, the property market is bracing for the collapse in international student numbers with, the, with Australia's economy to feel the blow for years to come. Like, there were a lot of negative stuff. There's more of it. Um, the banks, the banks loved this. They were all over it. So the banks were saying things like, CBA, I, can't, I still can't believe this. CBA said house prices could fall 32% under a prolonged slump, okay? You even had ANZ. We presented at ANZ branch here in Martin Place in Sydney the week that they announced this. Struggling borrowers will need to consider selling. Like, these created such panic, it's not funny. But what actually happened? Well, this chart shows you the cumulative change in the CoreLogic Home Value Index, and this index helps us to understand property price growth. So what we can see first here is in March 2021, this is where the experts told you that the market was going to crash. If you listened to the media and you didn't buy, and I know a lot of people that told me I was crazy for buying another investment property in, in 2020, here is all of the growth, by the way, that you would have missed out on from March 2020 to January 2022. Mind you, the index continued to increase until I think it was April, what I just mentioned before, April 2022. Here's another way of looking at it. This chart represents the change in value of Australian property. Okay, so total Australian property and what their worth is from March 2017 to March 2022. We're not going to look at all of it. We're just going to look at a little bit of it. So remember, we were told that the value of Australian property was going to drop significantly. I heard claims of 20, 80%. You just saw CBA said 30%. Again, Let's focus on when in time the experts told you that the market was going to crash. So that was here. At that point in March 2020, Aussie residential property was worth, what I still think is amazing, an eye-watering 7.28 trillion with a t, -t, -t, t trillion dollars. By March 2021, so this is 12 months, it had increased by almost $1.1 trillion. 
By December 2021, the Australian residential property market, which was without doubt going to crash and burn, according to all the experts, had increased by $2.9 trillion. Again, if you listened to the media and you didn't buy, here is all of the growth that you would have missed out on from March 2020 to December 2022. What blows me away more than anything else is that the experts that made these predictions, they still have jobs. And what's worse, I still get phone calls every day from people who are are freaking out about reading what these things say. They believe them. People are still listening. They've got a terrible track record. Stop listening to these experts. Stop listening to the newspaper. Now, since 1990, there have only been five periods when home price growth has finished the year in a negative territory. Those downturns have never been greater than 10%. Now, again, in every instance, the preceding upswing has been larger than the downturn that it has followed. So look, here it is. One, two, three, four, five. And here's where we are right now, that little green line. Even if we took a look at Australian house prices from 1880, and I wasn't even born yet, and we adjusted that for inflation, price declines of 30% have never occurred. It's never occurred. Now, according to PropTrack's Home Price Index, in recent history, Australia-wide downturns have lasted on average between 9 and 10 months with prices falling on average 2.8% from peak to trough. Now in Sydney, the picture is a little bit different with recent downturns lasting on average about nine months um, and prices falling 3.4%, so a little bit more, okay? The largest peak to trough downturn in recent years was in 2018 to 2019 when national home prices fell 5.5% over a 13 month period. Again, in Sydney, that decline was larger, with home prices falling about 11.4% over 22 months. Some people might remember the catalyst for that was most likely the Royal Commission in late 2017. We believe that these factors are definitely going to make the second tier capital cities more attractive to investors and owner occupiers over the coming years. Now, it's safe to say that everyone who is waiting for the apocalypse is going to be sadly disappointed. Now, you might be saying, but Jay, how are you so sure? Well, the future of property is a lot more certain than most people understand. And this is because most investors don't study history. Now, we're keen students of history. This is our description here of the real estate cycle. We believe that fortunes are built on market cycles. The property cycle occurs every across an 18 to 20 year period. Um, it's on average 18 and a half years or 18.7 years to be exact. Um, And the cycle clearly, historically, repeats itself. Now, I recommend that you jump onto our YouTube channel and you educate yourself on the property cycle. We have well and truly entered into the third phase of the cycle now, known as the second upswing or the boom phase. Property price growth is typically stronger in the second upswing. That's because you've got all this pent up um, fear of missing out from people that missed out in the first part of the swing. So they go harder and faster. Uh, The second upswing is the most optimistic part of the cycle, typically. It's called the party phase, okay? Now, not all states are in the same phase of the property cycle. Sydney, I would say, is further along in the property cycle. Um, Melbourne's probably further back because of its delay that it went through during COVID. But a good example here is that last year, Brisbane and Adelaide, second tier states, to be fair, had the same growth that Sydney saw over three years. So they had it in one year, the same growth that it took Sydney three years to make. There's going to be a tremendous amount of money made here. Now, I wanted to share with you a couple of recent purchases that we've made for our clients. Now, this purchase came about due to a very strong existing relationship with the selling agent, which definitely ensured that we secured this diamond in the rough, and I'll explain why in a minute. Uh, And we got this before it hit the market and with no competing offers, which was fantastic. And now is the time to buy people. I said this in my last video, less competition, less likely properties going to auction and going over reserve and vendors are much more open to negotiation. Get in now, don't wait. What is the point? Now the highlights about this property is that 
solid low set brick and uh, tile dwelling, 704 square meter site, okay, in a cul-de-sac position, so premium, located about 11 kilometers from Brisbane CBD. Now, there was an opportunity here for some cosmetic upgrades. That's why I say it was a bit of a, a, a rough diamond. Um, the current owners or the, the owner occupiers that had the property had pets, a lot of four-legged friends, places a bit dirty, a bit smelly, and we knew that we could rip up the carpet, repaint the walls, and really make this thing shine. Now, we secured the property for $910,000, and we got a valuation back at $955,000. I can't tell you how surprising that was because it's been a long time since valuers have been valuing things above purchase price. But we suggested some cosmetic upgrades uh, of new internal painting and replacing those carpets, like I said. This amounted to an outlay of less than $10,000, which is tax deductible. Uh, and uh, prior to these upgrades, the property had a rental assessment of about $650 per week, which would have given it a 3.7% yield, which is very attractive. Now, following the repainting and recarpeting, a tenant was secured in less than 24 hours for $795 per week. Now, that equates now to a 4.5% yield. And this rough diamond is now one of the best performing assets that we purchased this year because of that yield. Now, for anyone that's going, well, I don't really know Brisbane. How can I get an understanding here? For those that are in Sydney, where I am, and obviously we've got a lot of clients all over Australia and the world, but just giving you Sydney as an equivalent, if you look at the distance, it's basically the equivalent to ride, about 11 kilometers, okay, ride here in Sydney, where the median house price there is $2,350,000. Good luck getting a 700 square meter block, by the way, but $2,350,000 with a whopping rental yield of 1.73%. Oh, that gives me a bad taste in my mouth straight away. So again, $910,000 with a 4.5% yield, 2.35 million with a 1.73% yield. Ugh. Now this three bedroom house was originally built and purchased in November, 2010. So it was purchased for $397,000. So it's a 12 year old property, it's young. We bought it for $415,000. Are you serious? 415,000, okay? Now the client is receiving $410 per week for this property, which means they're receiving a 5.13% rental yield. Now this property is a bit further out. The client didn't have a huge budget. It's about 34 kilometers south of Perth CBD. The equivalent distance in Sydney would be Rouse Hill. Rouse Hill is actually a little bit further out, but let's, let's take Rouse Hill, okay? Here in Sydney, where the median house price is $1,410,000 with a 2.46% rental yield. Again, 415,000 giving us a 5.13% rental yield. 1,410,000 with a 2.46 rental yield. Now we're buying properties like these every week and we'd love to play a role in your property journey. Let our professional buyers agents help you. For almost two decades, Providence have helped Aussies locate, assess and negotiate their ideal home or investment property Australia wide. Stop procrastinating and contact us today. If you like what you've seen here and you want to be kept in the know with the Australian property market, make sure that you like this video and subscribe to our channel. I want to thank all of you for your time today and I will see you next month.